Hey everybody, how are you? This is Jim Prusak, licensed physical therapist from the Pain PT. And today's topic is you're not broken. You are not broken. And we're going to talk about this. And before we get to this topic today, I uh, just want to shout out again to the channel. If you like what you're hearing, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let other people know. I am trying to grow the channel a little bit more actively. I have just kind of organically let it grow let it grow, but I'm trying to now say, Hey, let's, let's get this word out more to people because a lot of people are suffering and need help, need something different, a different approach to their symptoms that um, they're feeling stuck. And they've gone down that physical pathway for so long of treatments and it's not working for them. So me as a physical therapist, as a physiotherapist, um, and I spoke with Charlie, Charlie Mello, my last um, uh, video offering we talked about how we've transitioned out of this physical biomedical model into a much broader biopsychosocial model. And I think it's so important to see even what we're doing because we've had to shift a lot of beliefs and a lot of understanding and knowledge we've learned from school into something different. And so I always tell people, if I can do this, and I've said things to people for 20 plus years that I would never say to them now, then you can do the same. Okay, so today's topic is you are not broken. You are not broken, all right? And what I mean by this is physically, first of all, you may think your body's broken in some way. There's something happening, some damage, something wrong. There's gotta be something wrong with me. The pain is so bad. It's through the roof or God, it's not going away. Why is this happening? You know, on and on and on and you get other messages from different healthcare providers that who can inadvertently reinforce that, yeah, there's something we see here, there's something wrong with you, or we don't know, which is really the curse, because then the person really gets upset. But I'm here to tell you today that the vast majority of chronic conditions in the body, not all of them, so don't jump down my throat, but the vast majority that we understand is that these 20, 25% of people who don't heal from typical conditions that 80 plus percent of the people do, it's because of the central nervous system. That, that has an overdriving factor in people, whether they recover in a normal amount of time or they go on to develop chronic condition. Okay, so this has been proven out in the research now. And I'm here to share that with you guys so you can understand that. Now, again, a lot of doctors aren't going to tell you this, even healthcare practitioners. I mean, I didn't for years because I didn't understand and know this knowledge and how important the brain and nervous system is in producing and causing real physical symptoms, debilitating symptoms at times as well, that can just be coming from your mind, from your brain. Very real. So... The idea is you're not broken. And, and what I mean by this is you're not broken physically. There's in your body, nothing wrong with many people who have chronic conditions. Okay. They believe something is wrong because oh, I feel it. It's there. It bothers me every day or when I do this and I do that and I do physical things. So it has to be physical. Well, that's not true. Okay? It's not true because we have these conditions in the brain called central sensitization. We have something called stress, you know, and emotions that are again, brain driven and can cause a whole bunch of changes in your body and which can then cause symptoms. We have things such as adverse childhood events. We have things such as trauma. Okay. We have things such as anxiety and depression. All these are mental things. These are things from the brain that have a direct effect on the body. Okay. We've cut the head off from the body for too long. Don't ask me why. We're one system. We know the brain is your most powerful organ in the body, and we know it can cause any symptom in the body. So what we're trying to do is get to this understanding through the evidence and knowledge we have about this and about your condition, that there's not anything physically driving the symptoms right now, locally in your body, in a local injury, local inflammation, let's say, okay, which a lot of people believe. I always say, let's go further up sheep. What's causing that? Like, let's say you have inflammation. What causes inflammation? Could be a local injury, but it could be further upstream from the nervous system and brain, which we know stress is one of the largest producers of inflammation in the system. So
So your body's not broken. Your body is not broken. Now, what do we need to do that? If my body's not broken, then what do I need to do to get better? Because I still have all these symptoms. Well, it's the mind that's broken. Okay. The mind isn't working right. And it's not even that your mind is broken, meaning that you can't fix it. You can, but it's broken in the way that it's dealing with these conditions. Okay. And there's lots of ways it's broken. The way we think about what's going on, the way we perceive it, the way we talk to ourselves, the way we communicate back to ourselves around the symptoms we have, the way we handle stress and emotions, the way we operate in our lives, the way we carry ourselves, the decisions and choices we make daily are directly impacting our bodies and directly impacting the other parts of our brain, in particular, the limbic brain, which is the emotional center of, of your brain and, and also where the driver of your autonomic nervous system lives in the hypothalamus. So if, if your mind is more broken than your body, then we need to fix the mind. Yeah, that's, that's where I focus now. And interesting enough, as a physiotherapist, I don't fix the body anymore. I fix the mind to help the body. Now, in terms of using your body, yes, I help people do that, but not with direct treatments on the body. Okay. We need to get the body moving again. We need to get the body back to some normalcy in whatever way that is for you. Okay. While we work on the mind, okay, mind, body, it's one system. But we're not treating the body now. We're really treating the mind to have an effect on the body. So if your body's not broken, but your mind needs some help, is this idea that you might think you're broken. Okay, this is a mind thing. You might believe you're broken. You might believe something's wrong with you. You might believe you're not going to get better. You might be scared. You might be worried. Right? You might feel hopeless. You might feel like you're not good enough. You might feel like you're broken. You might feel like you're broken. Now, at a core level, and I talk a lot about this with my, my private patients and clients, is that we have to look at your life history. And if you were put in a position where you were put into a lot of anxiety, you were put down, let's say, you were criticized, you were judged, you weren't treated fairly, you were abused, you were bullied, Okay, you were taken advantage of. All those things are going to put you down. And as a child, you're going to absorb that and think, well, I'm broken. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Now, that's shame. That's one of the core deep emotions we got to work with in a lot of people. But this is not true because shame is toxic. We know this. We know it's a toxic emotion, meaning it's not you. It was put into you by other people. And you now believe that about yourself. It's again, translates into I'm broken. I'm broke. I'm broken. Something wrong with me. Can't get better. No. The answer is, is, is a resolute no, you're not broken. You have to start up here. You have to believe you're not broken. You have to believe you're strong and powerful and complete and healthy and secure. And you can move throughout the world, go back to everything and teach this limbic brain a lesson that look, I'm okay. I'm safe. I can do this. You're projecting this danger. You're making me feel scared. You're making me feel broke and down and a victim. No longer. I'm not going to have it. I'm reclaiming my power. Okay. So a lot of the healing here, guys, is about empowerment. I really stress that more than ever in my work. I didn't stress it as much in the beginning part of my work with people, but I really do stress it now. That empowerment is one of your uh, biggest pieces of recovery, as well as doing some of the other work that I talk about here. So when we have an empowering messages and we have very strong messages from the frontal lobe of your brain, which, which is again, your prefrontal cortex, when we can start to use that in a very strong way, it has an impact on the amygdala, which is part of your limbic brain, which is one of the main areas that contributes and causes these symptoms in the body. So we need to take control, right? We can't just sit around and wait for this to go away or wait for somebody to fix us. No, it's not going to happen. We need to make it happen. And it happens by up here in the mind. We need to get the mind going in the right way. 
we need to get the cortex stronger because we know from a lot of data in the research that the prefrontal cortex is weakened. It literally atrophies like a muscle and that muscle needs to get stronger in its exertion over the amygdala and the messages it's sending back. So I always tell people, how, what are you saying to yourself? What are you, what are you, how are you talking to yourself? What do you think? What do you believe? And if someone's talking from fear or they're very tentative and hesitant and doubtful, I go, well, that's not going to work. You've got to get strong. You've got to be resolute, convincing, determined, confident, and strong in the message with conviction. Okay, doesn't that sound better already? You have to come from a place of strength, not weakness, especially when you're talking to your brain especially with these conditions, because there's nothing wrong in your body, but it's the mind, the subconscious mind, the limbic brain that believes there's something wrong, that thinks there's something wrong. And again, it goes all the way back to your childhood and this idea that you're not enough. You're not good enough. You're broke. You're broken. Okay. So the idea is that's what the limbic brain is projecting, that you're broken, you're under threat, you're under danger. And I'm telling you right now, you're not. And you need to tell your brain that strongly. Now, I'm not the first person to tell you this. Dr. Sarno, who many of you know, and he was sort of a godfather of this work. If you don't know him, look him up, Dr. John Sarno. One of his first best-selling books was called Healing Back Pain. And in that book, and I've talked about this in one of my other videos, you can find it, his three do's and don'ts for healing. He put it right in the preface of the book. It was his real main message. Maybe a lot of people missed it. But he had a couple of things in here that I want to highlight today that really speak to what I'm talking about here, about this empowerment. So you had six of them. He had six, six do's and don'ts total. And they really sum up his work. So let me talk about it. So the first one he said that applies here, he says, talk to your brain, All right? So self-talk, prefrontal cortex to the amygdala. Tell it you won't take it anymore. Talk to your brain, tell it you won't take it anymore. How does that sound to you guys? When he says, tell it, you won't take it anymore. Does he say, ah, you know, you got to be real. You just got to take it easy and, um, you know, go easy, you know, take it easy, try your best. Hope, hopefully you can do it. No, he says, no, talk to your brain, tell it, you won't take it anymore. That's a very strong message. Hey, brain, enough. Okay. You're, you're standing up to it, right? Your prefrontal cortex says, that's enough. The McBrain says, I don't think so. <sighs> Symptoms, you say, I'm not budging here. I know what this is, it's TMS. I know I've been a victim to this. I know you are just got this pattern in here that I'm going to teach you that I'm fine. So whatever you throw at me, I'm not backing down. Okay, so that comes back into a state of facing, which again, I have another video on that called Face. Don't fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Let's face it. Okay, so we're getting into this empowered state of facing this thing. You could say staring it down, talking it down, holding your line. And Dr. Sarno says the same thing, okay? So that was one of his three do's and don'ts. Talk to your brain, tell it, you won't take it in. Okay, I really want to impart that message to you guys today. What else did he say that resonates with this work? Well, he said, don't be intimidated by your symptom. You have the power to overcome it. Don't be intimidated by your pain or symptom, you have the power to overcome it. Again, where is that power? In your brain, okay, in your mind. You can't come from a weak place. You can't be in fear because there's no power there. You're weak, you're pulling back, you're avoiding, you're scared, you're tentative, you're doubtful. It's not gonna work. That's not a strong message in your brain to the limbic brain to say, no, we're fine, okay? so. You have the power to overcome this. You need to activate that empowerment internally and understand that a lot of times your empowerment was taken away from you at a young age and you've never been able to use it. Okay, you've always come from a weak place of fear or anxiety, tentativeness or doubt or not speaking up for yourself. But we need to reclaim that and start using that power we all have internally against this limbic brain that thinks you're broke. You're broken, you're under danger, you're under threat. It's too much, you can't do it, you can't handle this. And then you say, oh, I can't. No, 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 I can. Right. So the words you use, and, and I can't say this enough, everybody, 
through the years of doing this work now, I can tell when a person is in the right mindset or framework for healing because of the way they speak. And they use words like, um, I'm convinced or I'm determined. Um, yeah, I, we're going to do this. Uh, let's go. They're, they're, they're showing some courage and confidence and conviction in the way that they're operating. Okay. And those are the words they're, they're, they're challenging. Also, it's another word. They're challenging and confronting and standing up to this limbic brain versus somebody who's in fear using completely different language and a different tone in their voice. Okay. They're, they're kind of coming from this sort of hesitant place. Okay. But no, you can't do that. You need to come from a strong place. Again, why? The prefrontal cortex is atrophied. It's weak. You need to strengthen it. Okay. And we really got to use the evidence and knowledge we understand to give you the strength to tell the limbic brain what's up. The limbic brain is your reptilian brain. Remember, it doesn't have the smarts in it. It, it has survival on its mind thinking, oh, I'm going to just give this to the person for survival. Or if that's your pattern that you're not enough and you feel weak and you feel broken, well, that's the pattern that's going to run until you change it. Okay. Or if you're stuck in a fear pattern, an anxious pattern, it's going to run that until you change it, until you step in and make a change. Okay. So you've got to step in. You have the power to overcome this. Don't be intimidated by your symptom. Okay. That was one of that was the second one of the six three do's and don'ts. I'm going to highlight one more today because it's in the same line that we're talking about today that you're not broken. He says, don't think of yourself as being injured. Don't think. So that's another mind thing. Don't think of yourself as being injured. Psychological conditioning contributes to your ongoing symptoms. Psychological conditioning in the mind contributes. Yes, it does very strongly. And so all of you have the power to overcome this. You need to start using your mind. Your mind, if anything's broke, it's your mind. But it's not broke. It meaning it's not like it's not. You can't fix this. Yes, you can. You can. You can. The brain is neuroplastic. It can change. Okay. But it's your belief that you're broke. Okay. That's the thing. You're not actually broke in your mind. It's your belief that you're broke, which leads to all these other things, which leads to a loss of empowerment and a loss of the ability to get a sense of control over this and have what's called self-control or self-efficacy, which is very powerful in people's recoveries. So we need that to recover. Okay, we can't come from a passive, weak place. Okay, I always talked about acceptance, but from a place of strength. It's another video I've done. So everybody, I just want to highlight that today that you're not broken. You're definitely not broken physically. I mean, that's to me, step one, you got to get over. But step two, you might feel broke mentally, but you're not. You've got to step in and know that that's how you're going to get better. And you need to use your mind to heal your body. Okay. And you got to use your body and move it and show your mind that you're fine as well. So we're doing both mind and body but mainly it's coming from the mind and the brain that's driving the treatment now, not the body driving the treatment. Okay, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful day. Reach out if you need support, if you need help and seeing where you're getting stuck, why you're not having difficulty getting better. Um, I offer again, one-to-one -one consultations. I also offer a group class that meets once a week for um, during, the, during the month. So two hours each week. And very helpful for people. So if you're on the fence about getting support, get it, get it. It can push you over the edge into your recovery, whether it's from me or from another practitioner who's familiar with this work. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Take care.